The coalition, the Neighborhood Historic Preservation Coalition has invited all four mayoral candidates to participate in, in this year's forum. Only Congressman Bob Filner has graciously accepted our invitation. Congressman uh, Filner has had a long career in public service ranging from his, a history professor, the uh, San Diego School Board, to the San Diego City Council, to the United States Congress. I think it's very important right now to thank him for taking the time to come to our forum tonight. <laughs> And before we get started, it's also important to thank the University Christian Church for allowing us to use their space. We must also recognize those who helped spearhead this forum, Nancy Morris and Ann Garwood of the Hillcrest History Guild. Could you raise your hand? Uh, Deanne Carlson of the Between the Heights Neighborhood Association, is she here? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, a lot of coons of Saber Heritage. Bon of the University Heights Community Development Corporation. Yep. Okay, great. Uh, Diane uh, Kane of the La Jolla Historical Society. And last uh, but not least, Dan Soderberg. Uh, Dan Soderberg. Uh, Dan Soderberg. Dan Soderberg. All of them uh, should be uh, thanked for making this forum uh, possible. Oh, and uh, finally, uh, we want you to, th uh, to thank you, the audience, for being here as well. So give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> also, uh, if you would, anybody would like to make a contribution to help pay for the meeting space, we have a donation chart that uh, I think is in the way back of this uh, space. Uh, you know, even the smallest contribution can be of the biggest help. So let's get started. Uh, the coalition has prepared eight questions relating to historic preservation. Uh, I'll read each question, giving Bob time to answer each one. And in the meantime, uh, coalition volunteers, I believe, will pass around cards where you can write your questions. And then after uh, a review by our intrepid volunteers, I will ask que questions on the cards that they, that they give me. So. Uh, First question, Bob, is what's your favorite historic Beside me? <laughs> can, can I just have two minutes of introduction, then I'll be happy to yes, go through this. Good. Since I'm the only one here, I'll take the other guy's time. Uh, thank you for... You can have eight minutes. Right, that's true. I mean, thank you but for uh, all the organizations for what you do. I mean, uh, you know, I think uh, it would be a very... It would be even a worse city if you guys were not here. I mean, you've done... Uh, so much to preserve what we have and uh, you know the bulldozers still overwhelm uh, a lot of this stuff and, but, and you guys have lost some battles but the fact that you've won a lot has, has made our city a lot better and uh, uh, the key difference between me and my opponents they're not here but uh, <laughs> I mean I'm going to be listening to different voices I mean I really represent a whole different way of looking at things in the way we're going to progress through the 21st century. And you all will be at the table. You will be my advisors. You will be the people who help set my policy rather than the guys who want to bulldoze everything. And, and I sincerely mean that. And I don't know, you know, I'm going to answer the questions the best I can. But what I'm really, I want a dialogue that you talked about because I've got to learn more too. And I want you to educate me. Uh, you know, I was reminded you know, I, I'm such a historic relic that uh, I forget things that we did so, you know, in my years in office. By the way, I really object to the fact that I read the historical ordinance which says starting at, I think, with 45 years, you're eligible. That's way too young. I mean, I'm, I'm way past that. So I'm already a hist no, I'm, I, this, this is supposed to be a joke, guys, and I'm sick. I'll have to start that over again. Uh, but I was reminded that uh, of Eleanor Meadows uh, who I met uh, while on the city council, who was working to preserve uh, the Vermont Street Bridge. I'm so Quinn Street. Quinn Street, I'm sorry. Quinn Street Bridge. And uh, everybody sort of threw her out of the office, but I welcomed her in, and I learned so much from her, and she was my mentor. And we were successful. Uh, we were successful. But, but it shows what, if you have someone as, or group that's committed and, but, and really understands it, and you have someone in power, and a little bit, who listens, you can do anything. Uh, so uh, I think I'm going to be that person. I, see, I, you know, I was introduced to the street, to historic streetcars tonight by Christian, and we're going to do that. Uh, 
but I'm going to learn from you. And I came to San Diego 42 years ago to teach history. So you're going to have an historian. Uh, I taught history for 22 years at San Diego State. I'm a historian of science. I got my doctorate at uh, Cornell University and came to teach here. Uh, so I have, I think, an, an appreciation of history that most people don't. It was really strange when I was, I was like the city council district eight. One of my predecessors was Lucy Calais, who also had a PhD in history. And here we, we had two council people representing one of the most poor districts in the city, and we had two P history PhDs as the council people. It was rather ironic, but uh, it gave us the ability to understand things in, uh, in, in uh, ways that I think uh, the standard politician just cannot. So uh, you're going to have a friend. Uh, I don't have all the answers. We may not agree on everything, but I, you're going to be the key, the key advisors. I'm gonna, we're going to do what you want to do, and you've been working on for so long, many, you know, and we, as I said, you had successes. When I go down to the train station and you see what uh, a historical building that has been made so beautiful and has functionality at the same time, I mean, there you have, you know, uh, one of the, the best things that we've done here, the, the, the depot there. Uh, I happened to live for uh, many years on uh, the 7th Avenue uh, in, uh, what do we call it, what do we call it, uh, Hillcrest, uh, and the Marston House, you know, and that whole street uh, from Upas up, it's just such an incredible place to, to just walk and, uh, and absorb and you, when you have a chance to visit. Uh, the, those kinds of things, uh, I, I think the historical designation has been applied to the murals uh, on the uh, Coronado Bridge in, uh, in uh, Chicano Park. Uh, no? Okay. We'll have to make sure that happens, but. Why incorporate one into a restaurant? <laughs> well, there is. Uh, uh, what, okay, but there are, are there are some other murals that are have been housed that we need to to, to get stored. But when, I I know some of the history of how those came to be, and when you think about the history of a people's movement that preserved the park and the uh, incredible artistry of the murals, you know the two combine and they saved the park for the community. I mean that you know you you put that all in a package. And it makes living, it makes your neighborhood meaningful, and that's what we have to do. There's so many neighborhoods in here that don't have that kind of sense of place and sense of history and sense of understanding and and place where people can, I don't know, marvel together at. And when you have them, you must preserve. I mean, it's just critical because it makes the community. It gives you a quality of life. I mean, I when I was on the school board, I successfully fought to keep music and the arts in the school system when they were being cut then sort of deja vu, you know, uh, because you're, you know, you're giving, in this case, kids, but a sense of things that they have to have to be civilized human beings. I mean, I'm probably the only mayoral candidate who knows that the word for s civilization comes from the word for city. <laughs> a city gives us a chance to be civilized, but a city is not just big and has an economy, which is important. It has history, it has culture, it has art, it has people, it has community. And we have to have all of that together to have a great city. No great city loses its past. No great city has, you know, does not have places to visit which tell us about our, our, uh, our story, our history, our, our place here uh, where we are. So, uh, you know, we call, we call San Diego America's finest city. I don't think we're anywhere near America's greatest city. But we have the potential to do that. I mean, just in this room, you could, you could, you could, you'll give me enough ideas today that I could, you know, I'll spend eight years trying to implement as mayor. <laughs> I mean, you know, there's so many things we can do, and uh, I want to break down, you know, I want to put, uh, put the emphasis back on our neighborhoods and community. Um, you know, we have a series of freeways connecting some uh, or suburban developments. Uh, you know, and that's the way we grew, and we grew because some people got very rich on that and we tended to ignore uh, the sense of place and community. And we need to restore that. And, and the, the walking, bikeable, livable communities have that place. And we've got to extend that, preserve them, and build on that. Uh, I, want, I, I, I want to be a mayor that does that. By the way, uh, you know, the, uh, the present mayor abolished the Department of Planning, folded into something they called Development Services. We're going to, I'm not going to restore the Department of Planning, but I, I, I'm going to blow up those boxes and show that we're going to move in a new direction when I'm mayor. And I'm having a contest, by the way, of how, what do you do to 
include what you are doing and some sense of smart growth, of sustainability, of livability, pedestrian friendly, bikeability. All to, you know, we gotta, you gotta work on that as a whole. And I, so I had a contest for what should we name our new department or agency that we're gonna create as we blow up those old boxes. And I've been looking at the entries, if you wanna submit any, you can. Uh, the winning <coughs> one, uh, so the one I like best is called A+. Uh, the Agency for Prosperity, Livability, and Urban Sustainability. And, you know, maybe you want to get something historical in there, would, so you have, to, you have to join the contest. Uh, but I want to show that, you know, you, you, we, all the air issues we talk about, you know, public transportation, um, housing, land use, or, you know, uh, the way we, we want to preserve our environment and want to preserve uh, uh, historical sites and communities and buildings and place. Uh, but we also want to uh, um, have energy sustainability. And so I want to say, but all that has to, I mean, that's very complicated. But you can only do it together, right? I mean, as a, you can't just bulldoze here and build this and just, oh, you know, maybe now we'll look at the uh, historical preservation ordinance. I mean, it all has to be a, a piece. And there has to be political leadership to say, we're going to take that seriously. We are not gonna, we're gonna enforce our codes. <laughs> I'm gonna answer all your questions at once. We're gonna enforce our codes and not let these guys get away with stuff just because they, they you know, the fines ought to be serious and not just the cost of doing their business. But you need that from the top and you gotta have your, your city employees uh, empowered to do that. And the power has been taken away by people who have a lot of money, the developers who want their way and have a lot of money to do it. and. Uh, and the political leadership does not allow the staff. I think we've got some good city staff, but they're not allowed to do the work that they ought to be doing. Uh, by the way, I'm the only candidate also who's against this Proposition B that supposedly is, is pension reform. What it does is throw the employees under the bus. It says you can work for 20 or 30 years and you will not have a pension, basically. That's not fair. I mean, and so I have, I have you know, it's not on the topic, but I've come up with a different way to deal with this. But, you know, these are, our employees do not have Social Security. And to put them on a, a private 401k means they can may have nothing after working for 20 or 30 years. And the average person only gets 20, 30,000 anyway. I mean, that's not a ripoff of the public, I don't think. There are $250,000 pensions, which I want to stop. But those are all management employees who got, you know, phony bonuses and stuff at the end, which gives them twice the pension as their salary. I'm sorry I got off to that, but uh, I mentioned employees. So there, we, we got, if, if the political leadership, especially from the mayor, is there for the kinds of things that you, you know, all your organizations have been working on for so long, and I'm sincerely committed to them, both professionally and politically and for quality of life, uh, and I've, I've shown this, uh, I've been on a school board, I've been on a city council, I've been in Congress for 20 years. Uh, I'm the most well-prepared mayor you've ever had for running for this job, by the way. <laughs> but I'm also the youngest because I want to break the kind of hold that a certain group of people have had on City Hall and prevented a real discussion of these issues. Uh, and, you know, I'll just end uh, uh, this. I, put, I threw in my favorite stuff, didn't I? Okay. Uh, the, uh, you know, we're coming up to the centennial of uh, Balboa Park. It's a great chance to talk about all the issues that we have talked about here. And uh, I would like to get some ideas tonight maybe and how we celebrate that. I, you know, if people think of an icon, you know, as an architectural thing, but maybe we should talk about more long-lasting things that gave us this 100 years of Balboa Park. For example, what if we were to start real pedestrian access to the park from downtown, just as one kind of idea? Uh, of course, we've got to stop that bridge, or whatever it's called, uh, bypass. Uh, I mean, it's a monstrosity that uh, should not be allowed. By the way, I'm the only one who doesn't have money from that family <laughs> uh, in my campaign. But, uh, but I, I was the city councilman for Balboa Park, by the way, when I was, uh, when I was first elected in 1987. And we put, we put a plan, and we put the, uh, what do they call it, the precise plan for Balboa Park. It took years and years to develop that, but we passed it and it has not been implemented. And it has the answer to what Mr. Jacobs says he wants to do. That is, we talked about, and we spent 
long time <laughs> figuring out how to get the cars out of the central part of Balboa Park. And we, you know, we had a par parking out on, on the fringes and tra a tram system, low tech, a lot cheaper than this $40 million thing, which be the tram system in itself becomes a part of the park experience. And you, we can do that. I don't know why it's never been done. It, it, we can do it now. Uh, and we, you know, we can even, in, the, in that plan we wrote, it, we, we take back park space, we preserve the historical uh, beauty of, of Balboa Park, and we make the experience much, much better. I, I, I just, I can't figure out, and I, as mayor, we, I, we were going to go back to that, <laughs> that plan that we wrote then. Uh, so uh, I'm looking forward to working on all these issues with you. You're going to have someone, again, who's, who's listening, who's going to work with you. But I also know how to bring people together for, to, to, to make it happen. Uh, I was like the school board. I was the only Democrat on the school board, but they elected me president. Why? Because I was the one who had the ideas and the vision and the direction and knew how to run a meeting and get people together. I was one of three Democrats on the city council. They elected me deputy mayor. Why? Because I knew how to get things done. And I was elected by my colleagues in the Congress as chairman of the Veterans Affairs Committee, where uh, I was, for four years I was chairman. We did more for our nation's 25 million veterans in those four years than people have done for decades combined. Uh, I, I, we really, uh, and as a historian, I learned a lot about history, by the way. I, mean, I did not vote for any of the wars that uh, we've been engaged in lately, but all of the uh, young men and women that come back from those wars should be given all the care, the love, the attention that we can give. I mean, they're carrying out the policy, and uh, we have not done the job. And these. Uh, young men and women, especially since Vietnam, who have been forced to fight wars that you don't know who the good guys and bad guys are, and they end up killing innocent people, and they have incredible mental issues from that, and we've got to deal with it. I mean, and uh, we haven't been, so I've been a prime spokesman for that. That's my first answer. <laughs> I just want to get all that in, but if you have any questions, I'll be happy to take them. Too. Go ahead. We can do this. Um, uh, we'll start out with the first question on the list. Uh, what's your favorite historic Well, I site? talked about a oh, couple of things. You know, uh, uh -huh. I mean, I love to go down to the depot. I happen to go to L.A. or have a friend come down from L.A. almost every week. So we, I learned about that train station and the Marston House and the, uh, uh, and the murals I love. But, you know, you pick, there are some communities you pick around and walk, and it's just incredible. You know, you get, you feel like you're part of a place instead of, just getting in a car and being, you know, in a suburbs. Uh, we have to really restore that in, in this city. Okay, well, the second question then is what value do you believe is produced by respecting and maintaining ties to our community's yeah. past? I think I talked a little bit about that, but clearly as a historian, but also as a citizen. Uh, and for our children. <laughs> People, you know, you, you, I, I say po politically, you don't know where you're going unless you know where you've come from. I mean, you got to know where I've been as a politician to know where I'm going. The same with our city, the same with our civilization, the same with, uh, if you don't have a sense of that, I mean, you don't know, have a place, you don't have a sense of this. And I think, by the way, you make better decisions as a citizen, having some sense of where you've been, having some sense of the history. Uh, um, I happen to be running against, like, uh, when I first ran for office, I was half the age of my opponent. Now I'm twice the age of my opponent. So. <laughs> but, I mean, I listen to them. Uh, I, it's not that I disagree, but I, I, they're, they're, it's like they just discovered things for the first time, like there's homelessness. <laughs> or one, one, of, one of them went and, and met the president of Mexico and thought that that was a great achievement. I mean, I've been working with the presidents of Mexico, you know, for decades. <laughs> I've been working on homeless issues for decades. And it's like, oh, we discovered it, now we're gonna, you know, these are complex issues. And you gotta have some sense of what to do, and if you know the history. By the way, I, I was the uh, councilman also for downtown. And I did the, uh, I was the sort of political leader for the gas lamp plant. And I think that showed, you know, that when you have focused planning and, you know, good staff who understand some of the adaptive historical use and that kind of stuff, uh, and appropriate subsidy, but with, and with some innovative people in the private sector, you can do things right. I mean, it wasn't perfect, but you all, some of you remember what gas lamp was before I got on the council, I and mean, there was nothing there. I mean, there was no, 
it was tattoo parlors and you know porn shops and you know we could have done better but it is the most vibrant part of the city today and when I see, usually in politics you don't get to see the results of your work but we had a dream about that and we had significant preservation and we had significant you know public use and we had uh, uh, and it worked and it's very lively and that's what gives us our quality of life. <laughs> Thank you. What, uh, what ideas do you have to encourage uh, rehabilitation and adaptive use of historic properties? You know, uh, again, by the way, I, I want to—I won't, I won't say it again, but I'm going to answer all the questions with the same introduction. Uh, I need your help in, in doing this, uh, and I want your help. And we're going to—you're going to be the decision makers. I mean, there are people in this room where we can, we can run the city just from this room, I'm sure. I mean, you have the resources. I mean, and, you know, on these issues, it's still, it's still who are you going to listen to? Who's going to be at the table making the decisions? What are the priorities that you set for the staff? How, what signals does the staff get from the political body about who they're going to listen to? And that's where I'm going to start all, that, just assume that's my starting answer for everything. It's going to be a different day at City Hall. I think. Uh, I mean, we've show, shown what we can do downtown. I had a, had a role in that, whether it was Gas Lamp or East Village. Uh, but, uh, you know, an adapt, you, you, if you take an historic building, and uh, which uh, and you saw, if you go to the, the baseball, uh, the, go to a baseball game and you see that Western metal building, that's incredible. I mean, right? I mean, you not only, you, it's a great venue for playing baseball. <laughs> And I come from Brooklyn Dodgers and Ebbets Field, by the way. Uh, uh, but it, it tells you that, you know, this is, you're, you're part of San Diego, you're part of a past, it's part of, and it's beautiful too. I mean, it, it all works together if you plan it that way, or if you want to see it that way. I mean, they could have took it down, taken it down, and would have been, you know, it would have been a standard ballpark. The one they did in uh, Baltimore, by the way, similar. The same guy, by the way, did it. Uh, and I think that's why it turned out so, so good there. Uh, and, you know, they saved the vast majority of the historical buildings when we, we put in the ballpark. Uh, the old San Diego Trust and Savings became a Marriott. Uh, I just was at the uh, Lafayette Hotel for, uh, for breakfast. I mean, that's an incredible example of something that was beautiful and, you know, was historic, but you didn't tear it down. They renovated and kept so many of the distinctions that and it's, the most, it, it's an incredible place to have a meal. <laughs> you feel like, I mean, it just, I don't know, the quality of life is so much better when you have that sense. Uh, I mean, we can go to Denny's any time, but to go to a, <laughs> a place that gives you that sense. So uh, you can, we can, generally, you, you can achieve very good goals without uh, demolition. And uh, I mean, I think, by the way, I'm going to give you as a project, uh, I think we, we may have to deal when I'm mayor. City Hall. How, how, how would you, uh, w let's create a City Hall that gives a sense of who we are, not just, you know, that, that building that they built or even another, I, I don't know, some structure. I mean, if, if you, uh, somebody gave me this idea, I don't know if it's good or bad, you tell me, uh, you know, we've let some things just decline and become decrepit, which you, you know, the California theater, uh, you know, it's just, Nothing, right? What, what, it would make an incredible city council chamber, wouldn't it? Uh, so, I mean, let's... Uh, I mean, I, again, if I, you, you, give, you give me the architects probably in this group and you give me people who understand the, the history of that theater and we talk up with some urban people who know about the... Thank you, Dan. We, we, we have some people who talk who, uh, who uh, understand urban, I mean, uh, uh, I want to say uh, city politics, and maybe from some older city politics, uh, and have uh, just have an incredible structure that will meet the modern needs. I mean, you, you, you know, we could have all the computers and the IT and stuff in there, but imagine the facade and the and the chambers and the, the lighting and the, I mean, it'd be incredible, wouldn't it? And yet nobody's talking about that. Is it since that's been the way it is? I'm trying. To Where think. you mean in San Diego? Yeah, I mean that building, California. The California Theater. I'm trying to think. Do you know Dan? By the way. No, the twenties, but it's been dilapidated since. Uh, yeah. Well, they, they closed it. What in the uh, early nineties? 
But if you go to the Balboa Theater, which we took a role in, I mean, it's an incredible place. And, I, you know, I don't know the answers, to, but what if we threw that out for the city to talk about? How do you do a city hall that incorporates some of this stuff, and I'm going to put you all to work on it? <laughs> I mean, let's have a competition about that rather than who can build the biggest freeway, you know? <laughs> the Symphony Tower, to the council chamber where the uh, California Theater is, and then to a tower above it. Yeah, I mean, right. Symphony Towers is on top of the old Fox No, I know. Movie yeah. Theaters, you well know. Yeah, but I think, you know, we're only limited by our imagination here. Yeah. If we allow the imagination to take hold, and, and you know, and that's what I want to try to encourage. You know, I, w I just want to get people excited about our city again, about our history, our architecture, our environment. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry to go afield, but I'm just, since I'm the only one here, I could. <laughs> I mean, I just visited, we have four incredible river parks systems in San Diego, from San Diego to San Diego to Choyas Creek to uh, 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 the Otay Valley par uh, River. What, no, Otay. No, but no, I'm not talking about Otay. It's, it's, it's the Otay Valley. Uh, it, it's a little further north than Tijuana River. But, uh, yeah, each one has a, they call it the Otay Valley yeah. Regional Park, I think. Each one has a citizens group and a, a, around it for the last 10, 15, maybe 20 years, and they've purchased property and they've built trails. Each one is about, I don't know, 70% completed. It's a, they're incredible. I went to visit each one as preparation for running for mayor. There was one person in each park, and I got four votes that day. That was good. Uh, <laughs> and I'm thinking, there's no signage, there's no understandings, there's no excitement. People should be excited about this stuff. And it helps our citizens, but our tourists. And the same thing goes with the historical uh, preservation and historical understanding, that we should get excited about it. I mean, you know, you go to the, you learn about the Chinese uh, society downtown or the African-American roots that we've, we had here when, uh, you know, jazz was formed. I mean, it's, it's not only helps us as citizens and bringing school kids and learning about this, but it helps the tourism too, <laughs> right? I mean. We should have, a, you know, an historic, I mean, th these guys who run convis and stuff, uh, they're selling, you know, the beach and they're selling, the, you know, the zoo. That's great. But nobody is selling our historical trail. We, I mean, we can make a historical, uh, you know, you could put ma map, we can have maps and we can have certain tours that's, that start in Chicano Park or start downtown or start in the Marston House. I mean, we could, right? Do we? You guys do it. But the city is not doing it, as far as I know. Convis doesn't do it. They're selling their hotels, you know. And, uh, uh, yeah, but we're not getting excited. We got incredible resources here, incredible. And I want people to be excited about it again. Okay, and that actually segues into uh, the next question on the list. Uh, what steps would you take to better integrate cultural and historic preservation into San Diego's all-important tourist-based economy? <laughs> Okay, and you know, you know, we've, you know, we, the mayor, by the way, the political structure of this region is, 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 is I think, a little strange in that the mayor ha is, the, is the key person. I mean, the mayor outshines, in, uh, you know, the, the Congress people, the supervisors, city council. So the mayor has incredible individual, can set an example. He or can visit these sites, <laughs> take the press with him, you know, get people excited about him. Uh, I know where funds are in Washington since I've been there enough, to, enough years. Uh, and you go after, you know, grants for this stuff. You help uh, Christian do the uh, historic uh, streetcars. He just told me, I didn't know this, and I'm going to really get into this, that w the, the tracks are there. Yeah. I didn't know that. I mean, I really didn't know that. They're just covered up. I want to see a map, and I'll start digging up one just to show it's there, you know? I mean, just the publicity that you get. Can you imagine the publicity of, of me? unveiling one of the tracks. Uh, I mean, I, you know, I'm, I'm a political animal too, so besides being a historian, but I, I could see how you could make all this exciting. Wouldn't that be incredible? I mean, you know, I got, you got to learn how to use the media and stuff for this because it just, you know, you need to. But people should get excited. Schools should be visiting. Schools should be involved. You know, kids should learn this stuff. We should be tying in the, the, the kids with all this. I'm an educator first and foremost. So 
I would do all that stuff, but I think it's the personal example that you set. I mean, you t I talk, I'll talk about these things. I'll give state of the city addresses about them. <laughs> you know, uh, what the mayor's talking about is it encourages the staff, then it encourages the nonprofits, then it encourages your citizens to be involved. And it's a, you know, it's a, who gave me the, their card? It encourages a centropy. Oh, you're, you're centropy. I just, he taught me a new word today, too. I know entropy, I'm a scientist, but I. Uh, <laughs> entropy is much better. It is. He d when everything works together. I love that, by the way. We were going to have a centropic city. <laughs> but history has to be a part of it. I mean, you can't, you know, we, it's, most people tend to leave it out. And you can't. I love that word. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, by you know, uh, Christian, you know, uh, only has to look at San Francisco to see what trolley cars can do, right? I mean, come on. <laughs> this is not, we don't have to invent, reinvent this stuff. This is not, you know, radical things, you know. San Francisco thrives on it. <laughs> Let's do the same. Go ahead. Okay, um, on code compliance, um, <laughs> what, do you, what do you think is the best way, I, I know you talked about it earlier, yeah. What, what is the best way to enforce the city's code compliance regulations to prevent demolition by neglect of historic properties? Again, as I think I answered it. I mean, it, it is the personal example and the direction it gives. We have a strong mayor form of government now, by the way. You may have, we, we did five years ago or so. It's not, you have an accountable person who can set policy. It's not the city manager and, you know, who through bureaucracy somehow does that. So I will walk, I, we will set up this new agency that I talked about, and I will go talk to the employees and say, your job is, is adaptive use, historical preservation, I mean, code compliance. I mean, that's your job now. And the mayor will set that standard. So, uh, you know, you, 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 you can give me a list of uh, places that we've allowed to be neglected that should not have been allowed to, and yet the penalties and the enforcement is so is so minimal that nobody sort of cares. Uh, uh, Dan told me about the, the cottages, you know, up uh, the red, uh, what do they call it? The red rest and red roost. And you know, why should they have been allowed to, uh, to deteriorate? Because nobody is enforcing it and nobody cares about the uh, fine. Uh, again, we've seen the illegal de uh, demolitions, the uh, per construction without permit, and there's you know, they pay the fine because they have millions of bucks to do whatever they they want to do. So uh, we should. Okay. I remember that. Yeah. All of those colleges were taken down, but they can be replaced. They can be reestablished. But again, as I said, the answer to all of these is is political support. You guys, that's the. I mean, you guys have the hard part. <laughs> you got to do the job. I got to give you the support to do it. And we're going to liberate you to do that. <laughs> Free the historic preservation eight. <laughs> no, how many organizations? 12, 13? Uh, 16? 17. Free the historical preservation 17. <laughs> and we're going we're gonna to have a new name. It's not going to be development services. It's going to be with words like livability, sustainability, adaptability. Yes, sir. Yeah, I, <coughs> following up on what Ernie said, uh, I've been particularly concerned with the technical advisory that was created by Mayor Sanders, and it is primarily people involved in the building industry who have the biggest permit for the city of San Diego, the, the, the major building projects, you know, involved with the CCDC, uh, which is another thing that needs to be dissolved. I mean, Fortunately, I would have done it, but it's already been dissolved. Well, huh? it's not, though. They're still there. They're trying to be it, yeah. It's, it's just a shell, you know, game as far as I'm concerned, because they're still down there doing things. But my concern is the Technical Advisory Committee was created by the mayor for the purpose of giving those civil engineers and architects and builders and developers an, an inside speak to, to talk directly to the planning director, or actually he's the director of development services. And I've been to their meetings and it's appalling because they say, you know, they, they don't want to follow the, the, the zoning ordinance and, and he writes notes down and says, I'll figure out a way to get you off the hook. And I'm sitting there thinking, we actually take these meetings. It was terrible. You know, they don't want to comply with uh, the requirements to, uh, you know, get demolition permits. 
And they're complaining that the fees are too high at $232. Right. Did, did, but, uh, Ron, is that the Technical Advisory Committee for what? For, for the for the development services? I, I, Okay, oh, I see, okay. And, and so they wanted that inside thing. But the thing is, they meet in a, in a city building, they get free coffee, free sandwiches, <laughs> you know. Uh, Alright, well, that's, I'm not going to only blow up the boxes, we're going to blow up those committees. And we're going to have, and we will have a, you know, you will be at it, it, whatever committees we have, you will be part of them, and real parts of them. By the way, you know, as we update, we have to update all our community plans uh, and we have to have that as a central feature in everyone, you know, the, the, the preservation. And you, but you got to have the, the staff has to be told that's what we do. And I, they, they want to do it. They just don't have the support to do it. So we're going to change all that. Yes, ma'am. Where did you come? To the beach area community clinic. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then I also lived within two blocks of you in Burlingame. You know, I lived in a, uh, I, I lived in a, in a what? A Tudor house. Yeah. I mean, it was a wonderful place to, uh, we, at a corner of Calmia and 32nd. That's right. Uh, I mean, they had the lead, and lead wind, glass. lead glass, uh, you know, the art. I mean, it was just incredible. Uh, Unfortunately, we, we, we couldn't maintain it at the level it should be, and we had to leave. But, but, but I was going to ask you a question, actually. Um, I um, am qualified to be on a great number of advisory committees to the city council, um, like historical resources advisory of the city council, you know, planning commission is advisory of the city council, not to the mayor. But the mayor makes the appointments to these Yes. And, he, <laughs> and he, he appoints people that will further his agenda rather than making it a true advisory committee. Right. And um, well, we're going to have a different agenda. You, you, you know, you can see it's bizarre, like the kind of findings that they make. So, so will you, will you? Yes. Of course, yeah, and I would, uh, I want to do that, but I also want to make sure, I want to empower, as I said, the 17. <laughs> uh, and I need, you know, I gave you a homework assignment already on City Hall, but uh, I want, I want you guys, and uh, I want you to fight about it in private, <laughs> but I want you to decide who should be on. I mean, give me, I want your recommendations. Who should sit on what board? Who wants to and who is qualified? But if you come with a, uh, a unified set of recommendations, which is hard to do, but that's what happens when you have power. <laughs> uh, then you are so you are far more powerful. Then I'll take all the recommendations. I mean, if if everybody's fighting over what should do, it's harder. But if you all can decide, you should be on this board, and he should be on that board, and he should be kept off every <laughs> board. Uh, uh. <laughs> I don't want to be on any board. Good, I good. I've already <laughs> kept you up. Too so much work. And if you want an Australian, you take this guy. I mean, you know, uh, but if you all can, you know, I'm going to empower you. I mean, you're going to have meetings that say, who are we going to appoint to this? Rather, how are we going to fight the city on this issue? So you, uh, you need to get ready for that. I mean, and you ha it, it takes some discipline. You've got to get your priorities straight because what politicians love to do as you know, if you don't have your priorities straight, I mean, if, if the Balboa Park thing is being fought by this thing and you, nobody agrees, then they love it because then they do what they want. So I'm going to require some discipline and responsibility from you guys to have, you're going to have real meetings that set, a, you know, your priorities so I can adopt them. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I'm, look, this is a town where it's, I mean, I've been a, a Democrat in a Republican town. I, I have to work with Everybody, and I ha you have to frame the issues in a way which brings people together, and not separate them. So yeah, I mean, I want advice from all sides, because if you don't have it, you're going to make mistakes anyway. 
right? I mean, other p people do have good ideas even if they don't agree with you, <laughs> and they may s they save you from errors. So yeah, we have to have that. Um, not, you know the, uh, the the dynamism and the uh, that comes from different ideas. So I've always had to do it. I've had to frame issues in a way that doesn't get us into this liberal, conservative, or Democrat, Republican stuff because then they'd be just fighting on old grounds. Like I have a a plan for a central food hub that where we can look at locally grown organic uh, products. Which, you know, I love the urban, I visit all the urban gardens in San Diego and all the organic farms around in the county and try to figure out the economics of all this. And people don't have access. And so it costs too much. And there's, you know, and, but every parent, I don't care if they're liberal, conservative, they want their kids to eat healthy and be active, you know, and, and be healthy. So, uh, and what if restaurants and tourists and the school system can find a place where they can economically? Ha buy stuff and have a whole menu of things in a, in a variety. That, wouldn't that be good? But see, I, that frames an issue that most Republicans can't hold against me, right? <laughs> because, you know, everybody wants a healthy family. So those are the kind of ways I would approach it. I have another question that they're interested in. Yes, uh, they say museums, preservation programs, and the mm -hmm. arts are frequently the first programs to cut, uh, be cut during a budget crisis. How will you ensure that there is adequate funding and professional staff necessary to protect our fragile cultural and historic yeah. resources? Well, it, you know, it gets back to your priorities. I, I'm going to have that as a priority. Uh, as I said earlier, when, you know, you can't look at music and art in the schools as being somehow less important than reading, writing, arithmetic. I mean, it's a part of who we are as human beings. It helps us discover who we are as human beings. and so. Our city has to be involved in that. And I, you're going to have someone who can argue this stuff and then say, maybe we do need more, more money. And then we try to say we, you know, how, we, how, how we need that. Uh, but who understands how, how education is helped, understand how communities are helped, how our economy <laughs> is helped. Uh, but I said to a forum of uh, arts and culture, in, uh, arts and uh, the arts nonprofits, that, I mean, I understand the, econo the economic argument, but I'm sort of tired of it in, fr from a political leader who says, we got to do this because it's jobs. We got to do it because it makes us better human beings and makes us a real city and makes us civilized. <laughs> I mean, a city is, civil is where we have civilization. History is part of that civilization. Uh, and I will make the argument. And you got, if the leader, the political leader is making the arguments, the budget follows. I mean, it's, uh, it's just part of that. And besides, you can feed, as you know, you've done this with adaptive reuse. You, you, you talk about this in, in a lot of different contexts. It if it becomes part of your planning and part of your transportation system, becomes part of your education system, it's not you know, a separate item that you have to fight for. It's, it, it's just infused into everything. That's what we really want, I think. We want to fuse this sense of who we are and where we came from and the beauty of some of the things that we have created as part of who we are as San Diegans. And San Diegans don't have a lot of that. <laughs> I think they thirst for it, frankly. I think people want a sense of, you know, we don't want to be this, this, uh, what's the word I want? Uh, a, it, it starts, you probably know, it. not atomic, but when you're isolated from everybody else, uh, Anomic, anemic, no. Uh, anomie. Anomic, yeah. That, that, I mean, people don't know that they have it, but that's what I think they have, and they're not connected to each other or to our root, <coughs> the roots at all. Someone had a question here. Ron, did you have a question? Yeah, I was just telling me I should write it out. Oh, that's okay. I don't, buy, I don't obey rules. Right. Thank you. That would be a great, you know, I'm thinking of a Pike's Place kind of thing. I'm thinking of. Uh, we have little farmers markets all over the city, but they're in schoolyards and churches and things like that. 
you know, there's a lot of these old historical buildings, old brick buildings that have been adapted. And by the way, we just lost the farmers. Right. I, I went there to look at that, and I think uh, Walmart heard I was there, and they decided to use yeah. it for. <laughs> Uh, but there's a perfect example where you need a political leadership to say, no, this should be part of our community in a different way, you know, not something that destroys the community, you know. Uh, the last question that our uh, <laughs> is, uh, do you believe that Belleville Park should be a locally designated historic site? <laughs> and if so, uh, what would you do to move that forward? And if elected, will you make that a priority? Yes. <laughs> I think, you know, again, we're, I, I, when I'm mayor, we got the, the we, you got to take advantage of things like this, the 100th anniversary, you know, of Balboa Park. It's our centennial celebration. So you build, you should, again, I'll give you another assignment. You got to build a whole s citywide series of events around that. And that should be a central part that we preserve it for the next 100 years. Uh, and we stop this, uh, you know, the bypass and really have a, a transit, a system of uh, getting into the park without the cars. I mean, you know, parts of that have been changed and have become pedestrian. It's they're, they're just wonderful, right? And now everybody's, you know, so you, you have to have access for people who are disabled and others, but you can figure that out if you decide on a different vision. So, yeah, I think we have to do this as part of our centennial uh, celebration and uh, uh, it'll w I, you know if the mayor does it right it, it, it will become and the whole city ought to be involved in, in it and I don't know if any of you have seen it uh, before CCDC ended up having to stop some of its uh, activities a, a, a group had written a plan for uh, uh, for really establishing open space in a park system downtown which has never really been done and they had a series of, uh, there's a series of east-west and uh, north-south streets, three in each way, that become really promenades, pedestrian promenades, and then access to the Balboa Park and to the bay. Uh, that would be a great present, I think, as part of our centennial observation. But you got to get people excited about it. You know, people may want a statue. And I say, no, let's make the park accessible <laughs> uh, to visitors, but to our, you know, residents too. So. But again, you can, we, can be ex we can figure out ways to be ex excited about this stuff. I'm going to give you, because that was the last question, one thing I, I, I want to try to give this excitement. Have you ever heard, there's a movement that started in South America and now spread across the United States called Ciclovia. Has anybody ever heard of it yet? Ciclovia, what do you think it means, by the way? It's a bicycle, bicycle street bike, 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 I mean, it's, a, it's, it's Latin for bikeway, but what it means is you, uh, you close off, a, say, a section of town to cars for a weekend or, and, and you, people walk, bike, skateboard, <laughs> uh, but you can have art festivals, farmers markets. I mean, you get to know people in a pedestrian friendly environment. That's an incredible way to build community. And uh, many American cities have begun to do this. LA has done now three and they, they changed the name from Ciclodia to Cicladia because then they have a big LA in the middle. So my first, my first uh, when I was first running for mayor, about almost a year ago now, I started another contest. I said, what if we had a Ciclodia movement here, and that we you know, try to show neighborhoods they can be pedestrian friendly, and there can be a sense of talking to each other. And, all. and I said, I want to rename the Ciclodia into a way that has an SD in the middle. And so, uh, so peop I, in three seconds, someone yelled out, Ciclos Dia, <laughs> which you just did. Maybe you were the one who did it. That is, you pluralize the Ciclo and you change Via to Dia. Great for our his, you know, Hispanic heritage. So we're going to have Ciclos Dia <laughs> in San Diego. And we're going to go from neighborhood to neighborhood, especially we'll start with ones that you can do this easy, but then go to areas that are not used to that, kind of like Claremont. <laughs> or, by the way, in, in Washington, D.C., uh, they close off during the summer they, they take uh, Rock Creek Park, you know, their central Balboa Park, no traffic. Yeah. And everybody's walking, and they're bicycling, and they're, it's just, and, you know, you, you, and you're walking, it, 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 when you don't have the cars to fight, it changes everything. Yeah. And, and brings people together. I was in Washington, and we had a real, bad, real severe snowstorm uh, four years ago or something, completely shut down the city, no cars. You should see everybody. We were out walking on the streets, 
uh, right, people, right, people, yes, all right. People had to ask each other which store was open, so they talked to each other. A guy's skiing by, I couldn't believe it. I mean, all of a sudden there's skis around. Everybody's having little parties in their house. It's like when we had the blackout here. People start inviting each other in, you know, out of the adversity comes community. But why don't we have the community as our goal? <laughs> I think we should, by the way, uh, probably celebrate that blackout and impose a blackout and everybody figure out a way <laughs> to exist without the electricity for a few <laughs> hours. Uh, you realize that the Tivoli Bar and Restaurant downtown is the oldest operating bar and restaurant in San Diego? No, Wouldn't but why would you know about the oldest bar? Because <laughs> <laughs> I stopped by there. <laughs> I'm from San Diego. Oh, okay. <laughs> you, you just look like the obvious straight man. I gotta oh, use okay. you as a, you know, uh -huh. what is all this? Here's a question that came from the audience. Uh, Bob, there's, um, heritage tourism is 80% of uh, visitors to California according to the Travel Industry of America. I mean, what kind of tourism, I'm sorry? Uh, you, you heritage tourism. Heritage tourism. Yeah. Oh, How okay. about creating a mayor's committee on cultural heritage? Done. <laughs> <laughs> Pick the committee for me. <laughs> and then we're going to, but make sure that, you know, Convis and these other folks, if I still keep them all, <laughs> uh, you're going to be part of that. I mean, uh, not just a s separate thing. We're going to put you into the power mix, as it were, so it has meaning and not just a report somewhere. Uh, so, yes. Here's another one from the audience. Um, will it be possible to add funding and staff to the city's uh, currently underfunded and understaffed historic resources yeah. office? Well, if Mr. Jacobs has to say, probably it'll be abolished because they just, didn't they just come out against the, yeah. the park? I mean, no, the, the staff supported it. Right, I know. That shows where the political direction was coming from. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I, I mean, I can't promise that we're going to do, I mean, I would like to do everything we talked about. Clearly, you got some constraints and resources and politics and all that. But we're going to move as far as we can. <laughs> and we're going to move faster than we have before. Uh, I can guarantee that. So we'll, we'll try to do within the constraints of a budget and everything else. But, uh, you know, once you liberate people to do this, all kinds of resources all of a sudden appear. <laughs> Not only volunteer people, but, you know, some foundation hears about this or some corporation says, yeah, I think that's good politics for me to do, to fund, you know. And, you know, someone, I don't know, some big corporation will have some adaptive reuse that they'll, they'll come out for and they'll give them, I mean, there are ways. Once the energy is unleashed, <coughs> I mean, I would like it to be syntropic, but it may be entrop <laughs> entropic, you know. Uh, it's entropic right now. I know. <coughs> so we'll try, to, uh, we'll try to round it up. But... Uh, I think, again, if you, if you, we've seen mayors and uh, governors and presidents unleash energy to do things in ways, you know, that nobody thought would be possible. Um, I usually end my speeches, by the way, I quote one of my mentors when I was uh, growing up politically, that Bobby Kennedy, who I think quoted George Bernard Shaw by saying, you know, most people see things as they are and ask why. I dream things that never were and ask why not. So I'm going to ask San Diego to dream of things that, like trolley cars, I'll use you, Christian, sir. Uh, and, and a lot of the things that you have spent a lot of time working on to say why not. And I'm the, I'm, I, I think I have the, uh, the experience and the, the kind of ability to make the dreams into reality. So that's all. Thank you very much. Sir. You mentioned before that you were against the so-called breach in underground car park. We were at a meeting of the historical committee that advises the mayor, right? The city council. The city council. And uh, that committee voted five to zero to not, they didn't approve it. Wow. They're the historical committee. It's still got to go before the mayor, of course. Um, what I would like to see uh, in the park, and much as, as you have already said, some system, oh, and I'm dead against any sort of bridge or any changing to any of the historical uh, features in the park, what I'd like to see is some sort of easy, simple, uh, energy-saving transportation system within the park, right. uh, maybe come out onto 
Okay. Maybe you could do it with your trolleys, I mean your streetcars. Well, I used to drive the old town right. trolley streetcars. Oh, yeah? Which do you have an answer, Christian? I do have an answer, <laughs> but you guys all got to be kind of sworn to secrecy. <laughs> 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 That's going to happen. Seriously, on June 1st, I'm going to make a proposal for a temporary streetcar system inside Belleville Park for one year that will be completely removed after 2015, which will connect the parking lots with the heart of the park, but it's going to be temporary. It's going to run on lithium batteries. There'll be no overhead cables, no third rail. We've already gotten the estimates to do this. We've got enough of a timeline to do it, and it can be something that will draw people into San Diego from all over Southern California because these streetcars are going for people to use. When I first got them and looked at the red patterns on the floor, we can make a thief of ancestors. These streetcars are unique to our city. And most importantly, they were built to take people to a really long party. So they were built to delight the senses with gold leaf, silver leaf, bronze hardware, and other pearl push buttons. And they are the streetcars that we can all be very proud of because they were built at a time when the arts and crafts style, very short lived style, but they were built to fit in with the architecture. By the way, you know, the Balboa Park plan that, that I helped pass 20 years ago has the system, a tram system built in. Yeah, for you to work on this thing. But if we could do a centennial celebration used to this, it'd be incredible. But, Bob, 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 are you familiar with the Skyline Park in New York City where they shut down a portion of the elevated subway line yeah. right, and then converted it to you know, a park that's 40 feet in the air? My dream, personally, some people would oppose it because they like the access, but it was to close Cabrera Bridge to auto traffic permanently. Make it this, you know, pedestrian straw so like you find them in the great cities across the pond, if you will. Plant trees, nice walkway, picking up, what was the idea of the pavers? Disneyland on the first 50th anniversary did that. You could buy, you know, a little block, put your name on it, you know, London family, we have one there. Um, but they raised like forty million dollars, all for the for-profit Disney Corporation. But same kind of thing, you know. Put pavers out like around the B. Evenson Fountain there, where you know your family can be part of the next hundred years of the park. The money goes to the park or the, the park foundation that you create. You know, all sorts of creative things you can do there, not a stupid, you know, freeway exit bridge. Although maybe. Discrete Qualcomm signs on uh, the trolleys. <laughs> <laughs> With lettering style. Lettering 
just out of the magic period, authentically. Okay, okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. I gotta run, but uh, I appreciate it. <laughs> I look forward to meeting.